Hey y'all, I'm Alex with Soil Mates of Georgia and I'm back down at the farm and today I get to get on the tractor, which is one of my favorite things to do, to do down here. Uh, cleaning up some of the overgrowth in the pastures. Uh, we've had a decent amount of rain after having a really dry uh, few weeks uh, last month. The rain started catching and everything just exploded in a great way. So some of that is some weeds I need to get out and I'll show you some footage. I just took the drone over the um, pasture I'm about to mow now and you can see all of the thistle coming up and it's just nasty uh, for the cows. Cows don't eat it and it just it doesn't look good so it's taking up grazing space. So I'm going to run the tractor around here. I don't know if I'm going to have the skill to drive the tractor and do the drone at the same time so we'll see what happens there. Uh, and then I'm going to do another pasture um, in the bottoms where I have a little bit more space to operate so maybe I'll get some footage down there. But uh, stick around this ought to be uh, fun at least for me. This pasture is right behind the house and all this little green stuff is dog fennel. It looks like little miniature Christmas trees coming up almost, but it gets a couple of feet tall. And then the big stuff with the flowers on top is thistle and that's a lot more noticeable, but cows don't like to eat either one of them. So my goal was just to get rid of it. Well, after I said I was going to send the drone up and I got that first little footage, I took it down, got a couple of laps done mowing tried to take the drone back up and there was an error on it and i couldn't get it fixed and decided not to just like turn off the tractor and do all that until i finished this field so i went ahead and knocked it out you can see how much better it looks now it's really pretty now um, i didn't go out and get the edges i really was only going for the areas that had the thistle really high so um, i was able to get that done and leave uh, most of the grass really for the cows I didn't want to take it down low. I just wanted to get the thistle out of the way. Now I've got the drone fixed. I took a minute to go inside and fix it. And I'm going to head to another pasture, see if I can get it to work there. Now I'm in the bottoms and this is just covered with uh, dog fennel. Not a lot of uh, thistle down here, but for some reason this side of the tree line has more than the other side uh, and the creeks over here on the right. But uh, I'm just mowing as close as I can without taking too much risk of actually hitting the fence. But that was my starting point. I figured if I started there, I could do some laps, uh, some rows back and forth. You can just see what a difference it makes immediately. I have the blade fair, not too short. Uh, the grass in this area is maybe overgrazed. This part is uh, available to the cows almost all the time because uh, it's next to the creek and we give them free access to the creek all the time and you can even see down here in a corner where the fence turns is where uh, I didn't get close but I was able to get that with the brush the um, handheld uh, brush cutter later I was thinking about it when I was out there of why I said I like being on the tractor so much but it's just so peaceful being out there and there's also an instant gratification because you can see immediately what an impact you've had on the pasture and so it's that combination of just being out there no distractions no phone or computer or TV or anything just out there in nature and immediately seeing the impact so it's, it's just a refreshing way to do it and here's just the view from the back. You can see this mower, this is a Bush Hog uh, brand of uh, mower, and it has two wheels. It's an eight foot Bush Hog, and it lines up pretty closely with the tires. So it makes it a lot easier to be able to see where I need to mow because I can just follow the old tire track on one side, and you can see kind of here where I'm just going just on the outside of where I mowed before. and and I know the mower lines up right along that line there. For those who aren't as familiar with tractors and having a three-point hitch mower on the back, I want to point out the, the, it looks like it's on the nose of the tractor basically. There's two weights that we put on there. They're both really heavy, but that is a counterbalance to the mower because even though there are two wheels in the back, when we lift it, it would make the uh, tractor kind of do a wheelie, which is definitely not fun to feel uh, when you're out there. But that gives it the balance to make everything a lot smoother.
I'm on the back hill of the farm now, and this is the area from um, maybe, I guess it was about a year ago, I think it was June of last year, um, Susie and I posted a video of us with the handheld uh, brush cutters clearing out all of the thistle back here. And it was a lot of work. So I brought the tractor up here today to do that. But uh, what I've also seen is a lot of the, some of the fescue it looks like that we planted um, that my dad and I did so that a couple of months ago it was starting to come up. So you can already tell a difference just in the, um, in the few months we've had the electric gate up and done rotational grazing, giving this area up here a couple of weeks of rest has already made a difference. There's a lot of overgrowth up here, but there's also a lot of vegetation. So I think given enough years, it's gonna start coming back and uh, being even better. The stronger all of the grasses get, the better the um, weed suppression is. Uh, some of the stuff that we would consider weeds for um, a lawn at your home, like Johnson grass, is actually good for cows. So that's good stuff and it grows like a weed. Uh, but then there's also stuff, let's see if I can do this. Uh, this is a thorn bush here, briar. I think it's a multi-floral rose. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, we always called them briars because they have stickers on them and they hurt. And they are very invasive. Uh, I'm gonna flip the camera around in a second and show you what I'm about to mow. Luckily, I think I'm getting it a little bit earlier than I did we did last year, or maybe just the vegetation's better, so it's not as much of a problem. But uh, here, let me just flip the camera. There's a better shot of the, the roses or the briars or multi-floral rose, whatever it is. Uh, but it starts off just kind of small like that, and then it spreads and spreads and spreads. And the only way I've heard to get rid of it is either spray it with chemicals or come out and dig it by hand. Or have goats or sheep, and we don't have goats or sheep, and we try not to spray very often. And this is the thistle. This is what I mean mowing. And I'll get some of the thorn, some of the briars out of here. That multi-floral rose. Um, that thistle is a beast. You can see my shadow's getting long. It's getting late in the day, so I need to kind of get to it. Uh, but there is some grass coming up, which is good. So I'm happy about that. Since I'm not planning to mow the entire top of the hill, I just want to get the parts with the biggest overgrowth of the thistle. And when I'm doing that, I get to get some of the briars. But I decided to start with kind of a loop on the outside, and that gives me kind of a, a perimeter that I'll know to follow and gives me a, a stopping point. Of, uh, otherwise, I'll just keep mowing and I'll have an excuse to be like, oh, I'll go just a little bit further, a little bit further, and. Uh, I just fall for it every time because it's, it's hard to get off the tractor when you get going because like I said before, you get that instant gratification. You can see that you're, you're mowing stuff down. But on some of this, I really lowered the tractor. And here I just stopped and actually had to not lower the tractor, lowered the uh, bush hog. I raised it up because I was really trying to leave as much grass as I could. This part we rotationally grazed, so the grass is a bit taller up here. Uh, and then when I would get to an area that was uh, briars later on, I skipped that one, I would lower it and then raise it back up. There's a handheld lever on the right side that I could operate. But now I'm just trying to go through and get the seed heads off of some of the tall grass and then also um, get all the thistle that I could. You can see this area here where it's kind of a red streak. That's where I'd, I'd gone through it before on the turn and the mower is too low. And especially on turns, it just gets a little bit of an angle. The weight of the mower shifts a little bit and it digs in a little bit. So that's why, why I ended up uh, raising it after I saw that that was happening. And then there, I, I lowered it. I should have come back a little bit when I, I missed half of that uh, briar patch there. But lower it and then I can move forward. And also I uh, had a bonus to get an anthill there. And then I'll raise it up a little bit when I get clear of this, uh, this little row. I don't know if you can tell us much on camera, but uh, this area is a lot thicker grass than when I was mowing in the, in the bottoms. 
So I, it does look like that uh, end of fight free fescue that my dad and I put out came up pretty good. It's thicker. And so maybe that's why the, uh, the briars and the uh, thistle hasn't come up as bad this year, although it's, it's bad enough. But you can see, uh, here's a good example of how thick it was in some areas. You can see just going over, I'm riding on my right wheel over there. It's pretty much lined up with the row before. And then uh, it gives me that, that clear path to follow. And it just eats it up. Uh, and you can see in some of these scenes, some of these scenes that the uh, seed heads are a little bit too mature because I hit it and it's just spread more seed around. But after this mowing about this time of year, they don't seem to come back. So it's, it's that's why I end up doing this in June. I get it late enough that they've come up, but they're not coming back. And there, I'm, you can see the red streaks in here. The mower is a little bit lower, but it's also hitting ant hills. So it's dragging those, spreading them out. They'll they'll come back, but it, it knocks them down for a little bit. Now it's two days later, it's Sunday morning. I'm gonna finish up what I started on Friday night. My dad ended up uh, coming down here Saturday and worked on another project all day. And um, I'm still recovering from that. But uh, I didn't get to finish up what I wanted to on Friday because it was running out of sunlight. And um, I actually ended up having to take the tractor back. We keep the tractor at my cousin's house because he lives down here. And um, I drove back just before the sun was down, dropped it off over there, and decided not to go get it again because I was afraid that if I got back on the tractor, I'd be on it for a few hours, and I really just have this area along the electric fence here, this poly braid. That's the only area I didn't get to clear out. So I'm just gonna get the brush cutter and run through that and finish it up, and it probably will take me a little long, or it'll definitely take me longer than mowing it. But if I mowed it, I would have to go in and pick up each of the posts, move them over, and then mow. And I could probably just leave them where they are. But I think just doing the brush cutter will be easier, and it also saves me the time of going back and forth to my cousins. Um, but it's, uh, it should be a pretty easy task, I hope. I also need to cut around the... Um, that's not bad, but I could see the uh, solar panel there. If I left it, I could see that getting covered up with... Um, grass and blocking the view a little bit so it's in the shade right now because it's early but the sun comes right up here and it's going to be cooking it all day so it's going to have plenty of uh, plenty of light so this is just me finishing up what i started on friday this is the area i was mowing uh, in the bottoms with all the dog fennel so it looks great now like i said this is two days later you can't even see all the uh, the litter that i dropped from mowing it but the right side is right on the fence line and all that is getting close to touching the fence. And so it's just, it's easier just to come through and knock it out by hand, I was hoping, and just take care of it easily enough that way. And then here is the path on the other side of the fence where I was trying to mow it over some to get some of this overgrowth here on the right, but that's a little bit too marshy. We did get a good rain a few nights ago. And so I ended up leaving that. There's not a lot of weeds in there, so it's better for the cows to have some good growth in there and better for the soil, really. I finished what I came down here to do. And I'm exhausted, I'm completely soaked. I, I missed my opportunity, I think, of um, catching the shade along the fence line. When I was flying the drone up there, I was thinking, man, this is gonna be nice. We'll be in the shade most of the way. And I messed around with the drone too long and I had sun almost the whole way. So either next time I need to either start earlier in the morning or just move the fence and mow over it. But I've really been uh, pretty good about, uh, or I'm not really good, I've really 
had good luck of walking it because I found a lot more briars that were starting to come up and I was able to nail those before they really started to grow. So I think little by little, it's just baby steps the whole way and uh, eventually we get everything taken care of. So thanks again for watching y'all. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. And of course, like this video if you liked it or thumbs it down if you didn't like it. Talk to you later, bye.